Hello, everybody. I'm going to record a video. Knowledge number seven, Cinderella. Who's ever heard the story of Cinderella? Me, I have. Okay, so we are going to describe the events in this story and we're going to learn um, some vocabulary words. The first one is tattered and the second one is ball. A few more words, cinders, hearth, merriment, stumbled, and again, tattered. Tattered means torn or worn out. So Gemma could no longer wear her sister's coat because it was tattered. Stumbled means that you tripped. Merriment is fun. A hearth, please go cut it out, is the front area of a fireplace. And cinders are the bits of burned wood from the fireplace. Any of you all have a fireplace at your house? No, I live in apartments. Well, sometimes apartments have fireplaces. I lived in an apartment that had a fireplace. Okay, so this is the story of Cinderella. We're going to see if this story is like the one of the movie. Yes, Ava. I never thought of this. You never saw the movie. Raise your hand if you've seen the movie Cinderella. I haven't even seen those. Okay. Maybe it's not something kids watch nowadays. I don't know. I don't watch it. Okay. Well, listen, and I will tell you the story of Cinderella. It's actually better if you haven't seen the movie. Because then you don't have any preconceived ideas. Once upon a time, there lived a little girl and the little girl's father married a new wife. The little girl's stepmother forced her to do the hardest and dirtiest work in the house while the stepsisters did nothing. When her work was finally done, she would sit tired and alone by the hearth of the fireplace among the ashes and cinders. A hearth is the front area of a fireplace. Cinders are small bits of burned wood and so she became Cinderella. Cinderella's stepsisters had fine rooms with soft beds and thick carpets and mirrors so large that they may see themselves at full length from head to foot. But poor Cinderella had to sleep on the floor next to the fire. Yet she bore it all patiently and did not complain to her father for his new wife ruled him entirely. What's she doing in that picture? What's her work? Yeah, she's down on her hands and knees scrubbing the floor. One day, the king's son, the prince, announced that he was going to hold a ball. A ball is a fancy party with dancing. The stepsisters shrieked with excitement at the announcement. All the young ladies in the kingdom were invited to the palace for a grand evening of dancing and merriment. The word merriment means fun. For days, the stepsisters primped in front of their mirrors and talked of nothing else. Look at them. Oh, okay, they look fancy. Don't I look pretty? Don't you like my dress? They're primping. You know what they say about girls that do too much primping? They're not real pretty to start out with. No, they are not. Mm-mm. Most of them. Cinderella is pretty. All right. The stepsister snapped at Cinderella. You must help us get ready for the ball. Clean our shoes. Comb our hair. Hurry. Cinderella helped her stepsisters without complaining. Silently, however, she longed to go to the ball and imagined herself dancing with the prince. Once at once the day came. The stepsisters and their mother left for the palace. Cinderella watched them as long as she could. When she had lost sight of them, she began to cry. So miserable and alone did she feel. Why is she crying? She wants to go to the ball. And she's like the only one who can't go. And they're all gonna go and have fun without her. And they left her there. Me. Yeah, they are mean. And they, they made her help her get like ready and stuff and then they even let her go. 
But Cinderella was not alone after all, for she heard a gentle voice ask, what's the matter, dear? She looked up and saw a woman with a kind face. I wish I could, I wish I could, became, began Cinderella, but she could not finish for all of her tears and sobbing. You wish to go to the ball? Is that it, said the kind woman? Then it shall be so, said the woman, for you see, she was Cinderella's fairy godmother. So she could grant wishes. Look how pretty she is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she looks beautiful. So she's gonna grant her wish to go to the ball. Now run into the garden, she said to Cinderella and bring me a pumpkin. Cinderella went immediately to the garden, though she could not imagine what a pumpkin would do with going to a ball. She watched her fairy godmother scoop out the inside of the pumpkin, leaving only the rind. The rind is the tough outer skin of the fruit or vegetable. Then the pumpkin turned into a dazzling coach lined with satin. A coach is like a fancy carriage. Next, with a touch of her wand, she turned a big rat into a fat, jolly coachman to drive the coach. Let's check it out. <gasps> Ooh, that is fancy. Yeah. If you finish with your crown, just leave it for a minute and we'll get it for you, okay? All right. Now, dear, said the fairy godmother, bring me the mouse trap at the house. Cinderella brought the trap, which had six live mice in it. Open the trap door, dear, said the fairy godmother. Then, as each mouse scurried out, she gave them a tap with her wand. How many were there? Six, right? So that's three. Four, five, six. Wonder what was gonna happen to those mice? Uh, no, not at this moment. Let me finish recording. Oh my goodness, look what happened to the mice. Suddenly, Cinderella was surrounded by white light as she watched the six mice turn into six horses, all beautiful and colored gray. Well, said the fairy godmother with a smile, aren't you pleased? Are you ready to go to the ball? Oh yes, said Cinderella, but must I go in these dirty rags? Oh my goodness, look at that dress. Her godmother laughed and with a touch of her wand changed Cinderella's tattered clothes into a glittering gown of gold and silver. Cinderella's old clothes were torn and worn out, but her new gown was sparkling and on her feet were glass slippers, the prettiest in the whole world. Cinderella stepped into the coach. Before she left, the grandmother, fairy godmother gave her the warning. Do not stay at the ball till after midnight, not even a moment. For when the clock strikes 12, the coach will once again be a pumpkin, the horses will be mice, the coachman a rat, and your gown will be the same old clothes you had on. So what will happen at midnight? Everything, right? Everything will go back the way it was. She has to pay attention to what time it is. The prince, asked Cinderella, hmm, hold on a second. Her godmother laughed and with a touch of her wand, oh, I already did that part. Okay, Cinderella promised she would leave before midnight. Then calling out her thanks, she rode away in the coach feeling happier than she ever felt before. At the palace, the prince heard that a great princess had arrived, but no one knew who she was. Dang, have a seat please. Leave your crown at your desk when you finish, okay? And I'll get a hold of it in a minute. Cinderella's face shone with happiness. Everyone at the ball looked in admiration except for the two jealous stepsisters who glared at the lovely Cinderella. They were jealous of the young woman because they wished the prince would dance with them instead. How quickly time slips away when your heart is happy. As Cinderella danced again and again with the prince, she heard the great bell of the palace clock roll. One, two, that's beautiful, Liam, just cut it out. Oh no, she gasped the clock. What time is it? The prince answered, midnight. Midnight? 
Cinderella's cheeks grew pale. She turned and then fast as a deer ran out of the ballroom, down a long hallway, and then down the staircase. What was wrong? Why did she start running? Yep. She had to get away, right? So he couldn't see her. Um, at the foot of the staircase, she stumbled and one of her glass slippers fell off. Cinderella tripped and lost one of her glass shoes. Can you see the slipper? It'd be a little hard to see. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there. But Cinderella could not stop. Already the clock had sounded its 11th stroke. As she left breathlessly out of the castle and into the darkness, she heard the clock strike midnight and her smooth gown turned into rough cloth and her real clothes. The dazzling coach turned back into a pumpkin and she ran home alone. When she got there, she was out of breath and climbed up the stairs to her cold attic room. Then she noticed she was still wearing one glass slipper. Now, when Cinderella had run from the palace, the prince had raced after her. And though he had not been able to catch her, he did find at the bottom of the staircase the glass slipper that had fallen off of her foot. And that is why the very next morning, the sound of trumpets woke the kingdom and the prince announced he would marry the person whose foot fit the glass slipper. The prince sent men to try on the slipper on every foot of every woman in the land. From house to house they went, trying on the slipper on foot after foot. But on one foot, the slipper was too long, on another too short, on another too wide, and on another too narrow. Who's the only person that'll fit? Cinderella. Cinderella. And so it went until at last they came to the house of Cinderella and her stepsisters. One by one, the stepsisters squeezed, pinched and pulled and the slipper would not fit. Why did they want to make the slipper fit? Because they want to dance with the Yeah, they want to get married to the prince too. Then from the shadows, Cinderella stepped forth and said, let me see if it'll fit me. You, the stepsisters cried, go back to the cinders from which you belong. But one of the prince's men said that he had orders to try the slipper on every woman in the kingdom. He placed the slipper on Cinderella's foot and it fit perfectly. The stepsister's mouth dropped in astonishment. How does your mouth drop if you... Um, astonished like surprised like oh my goodness and then they were even more shocked when from her pocket cinderella pulled out the other glass slipper why were the stepsisters surprised why because it was mm -hmm. did i say bring it up now, they recognized Cinderella as the beautiful lady they had seen at the ball. They threw themselves at her feet and begged her pardon for all the ways they had treated her so badly. Cinderella was so kind-hearted that she forgave them and embraced them. Later, Cinderella married the prince, and she even invited her stepmother and stepsisters to live at the palace. And there, Cinderella and the prince lived happily, happily ever after. So let's answer some questions real quick. How did Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters treat her? Nice? Mean. 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 How do you know they treated her mean? Because she had to clean off the floor. Yeah, she had to do all the work and she couldn't even sleep in a real room. She had to sleep at the fireplace. Um, when Cinderella goes to the ball, why does she have to leave at midnight? Because everything is going to Normal. Right. What happens at the very end of the story? She and the prince Maybe. get married and live happily ever after. Um, is this story real or a fantasy? Fantasy. That's right. Just a minute, Sienna. All right. I'm going to show the friends on the computer number seven, okay? And then we'll get Word work, tattered, an object that is worn or torn, torn or worn out. Draw a picture below. So we're going to draw a picture of tattered, like the tattered clothes. And then here, draw a picture of what you'd find 
of where you would find cinders. You guys know where you would find cinders in a fire. fireplace. So we're gonna draw a fireplace and then we're gonna draw some tattered clothes. Okay, friends, thank you for stopping by. I'll see you later.